and and having somebody and David too actually David and I've been friends for seven years and, and <laughs> I know. I've given him a run for his money, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm a taskmaster, man. <laughs> Pamela, I want you to go over what we went over on break. Okay. All right. I, I said I was telling Trish that it was very interesting to me, this beautiful woman who is getting so much better and who was a dental hygienist did speak to a doctor in Canada who state that the mercury buildup in the body is used to spin biofilm. It is my belief to date that this species spins and makes fungal hyphae from the toxins that are stored and built up in the body. I believe that it is very encouraging that Dr. Fry says that this species can be brought into remission. So if you're clearing the body, you need to clear out the toxins and things. And I do believe, it's just my own personal belief, that this species is a new species and it spins fibers from the toxins in the body and, and lives off that in some way. And it's just my personal belief. But you could say I'm all wet and crazy or whatever. I don't care. It, it's from seeing my friends and myself. And that's basically what I believe. And then hearing this practitioner who chooses not to be named is stating the same thing, that mercury is used to spin biofilm. So it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. It most certainly does. Well, sure, there are things living at the bottom of the ocean that are living off of boiling sulfur, and they say that if they can live there, they can live on, on Venus and Mars and other places. And why can't small microbes reproduce and and uh, mutate and evolve more quickly than large organisms, which are very complicated? These small organisms can certainly learn how to do things like spin fiber out of mercury and, and so forth. Right. No, and it was just a, a quandary to me. You see all of your friends, all your people, and all the people you've seen, Tricia, and all the people that are known to be seen, if they have more guns, they have fibers, they have different external parasites, if they have external parasites. And how could that be that every one of them has fiber spinning? It didn't make sense. Mm-hmm. What makes sense is that they have a symbiotic relationship with the blood-borne protomyxoa. Mm-hmm. And that would make sense to me. Remember us talking about the practitioner you talked to in Arizona, and you asked him how could the Morgellons parasite be external and internal, and, and how could it be? You were pulling those. I remember those pictures you had of those giant bugs out of those people, and I thought, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. You couldn't be doing that, actually. Mm-hmm. And what did the practitioner say to you? He said that something about that it wasn't external, or what did he say to you? He said it was secondary to the terrain. And Mm -hmm. the other thing is, I have a friend who's a soil entomologist, and he explained something to me which was astounding. He said, you can have a small break in your skin, and what is the fastest, what is the fastest insect in the entomological world? And I said, what? And he said, the fly. The fly carries hitchhikers on them. And I saw this actually under a scope of a fly, and it wasn't a huge fly, but it had mites. It had mites on it. It had worms on the wings. Well, <laughs> I call them hitchhikers. So then they land on the skin, and then what happens is that they can get in through a cut, or they can get in through the skin, and they can morph under the skin. I mean, that's a, a, a lovely environment for parasites, oh, because dear. then they can just morph around. But in my case, I've pulled out alternarium fungal hyphae, black fly, a particular worm, flatworm, you name it. I was pulling this stuff out of these people. And the thing was that I, I kept saying everybody wants it to be one thing, and it's not just one thing. But now that we're getting down to the protomyxoa, it makes sense, Pam. Mm-hmm. Science makes sense. I've said that from the very beginning. Then I look back, too. One of my first four people that contacted me had been diving in Panama. Now, all four of them had been diving in Panama, and they got this stuff in Panama and brought it back. And all of these people did have parasites. And then look at a map. 
of parasitic diseases. When it gets to the United States, it just stops at Mexico, and it just stops at a certain country, and the United States doesn't have parasite invasions or don't have things like that. Uh You know, I mean, it, it just always baffled me how every country has parasites. And parasitology used to be mandatory in med school until about 20 years ago they stopped it. And I think that everybody wanted me to ID their stuff. And I'm like, you know what? I know enough about entomology to be dangerous. And the other person that is great, uh, Deborah Oshler with the National Particulosis Association and my friend Sydney, they did a study in Oklahoma. I believe it was in the late 80s. And they did a study, and they were pulling columbola out of people. And columbola, as you know, are, they're the scavengers of the soil. And they were getting columbola on skin scrapings. Well, so, they do by process, they're not going to see the amoeba. Right. You know? That's right. Right. So, so when, you, when you were first doing all that, what did you think Morgellons was? You, I thought it was the external parasite until I started, everybody had something different. Yeah, every every one of them had something different. And what people don't realize is that's part of nature. You're surrounded by dust mites. You're surrounded by all this other stuff. Somebody called and said that that they had a bird mite infestation in their home and that they all got sick from the bird mite infestation. So it's not just one thing. And it's really a sad day to me when you go to a mainstream medical doctor and he can only spend five minutes with you. Pamela? Yes. Any closing statements? I just want to say God bless everybody and that it is a joy to serve in this way, that that the biggest reward we get is in knowing that people are stabilizing. People no longer have to be in fear that they won't even find a practitioner to look at them or have a lab. Mm-hmm. And it is a blessing and a God-sent gift to be able to serve and help uh, all the people that we can in any way that we can. Yeah, and 2013 is going to be our year. It's the year. I think it's the year for for many, many people getting well and to find the answers. I'll close that out with a a little recording of how the CDC understands uh, more gallons, okay? (laughs) That's about it. All right. Thanks, We know about the Gulf oil spill. We know about problems with voting. We know about environmental toxicity. We know that there are problems about the wars that our government is not representing the people as we would wish them to represent us. But we also know that there are crystal clear solutions. I'm Patricia Springstead, and I'm heavily involved in making the world a better place. Every day you try to brainwash people just to have things go. Trisha Springstead on Freedomizer Radio. Crystal clear solutions. Well, tell me what you're gonna do when you're wearing strap.